so Lawson Deming, yeah. you were the uh, visual effects yeah. uh, for Man in the High Castle. Um, you know, we've gotten so far CG in a lot of things, and you know, we still have practical effects. What are the challenges in balancing the two, going back and forth between using practical effects and, and digital effects, and making them blend almost to make it look effortlessly blended? But I know it takes a lot of work for you. CG is in pretty much every form of television and uh, movies now. It's it's everywhere. And visual effects are more common than they've ever been. Uh, partly for expediency and partly uh, just because the appetite for cool things is, is, is growing and growing every day. Not just for big visual effects projects, but for, for every type of project, every type of show. The big trick with a show like The Man in the High Castle is that we are we're trying to create a world that feels lived in, that feels believable, and that feels historical. So there is a ton of historical reference, and there is a ton of collaboration with the other departments on the show, the production designer and the art department, to create all these real things that oftentimes exist in the foreground, whereas our work exists in the background, mid-ground or background. And um, there, it has to be seamless. So what I do is I have conversations with the production designer. I go to set and I take photos of all of the textures, all of the objects, uh, the set walls. And then when we're on location, I take photos of all the real pieces of that location. We use it to reconstruct our, our set extensions. You know, the, the key is trying to hide stuff where people don't expect to see it, um, and it's a it's a challenge. But it's it's probably exists in more areas than you notice it because when you're primed to see something a certain way and to accept the reality of a show because of the narrative, because of the sets, because of the, the props that you do see right in front of you that the characters are interacting with, we can extend that into the background uh, pretty seamlessly. Now, technology is evolving every day. You know, we take we buy a computer today, we pull it out of the box. It's three months behind, uh, you know, on the last update for, uh, from Microsoft. Yeah. What are the challenges in keeping up with the technological advancements week to week? Because everything keeps growing constantly, and you have to constantly learn the new the new techniques. Yeah. You know, people. There's an impression that people have that because computers are getting better, that that somehow makes our job easier. Uh, but in a way, the opposite is true, because as things improve, we need to keep pace with every new thing. Most people might learn a new software once in a blue moon, and we're constantly on the lookout for the new software that's going to make what we do easier, faster, more effective. That means oftentimes on an enterprise level, introducing new workflows, new softwares on a, on a weekly basis, literally sometimes on a weekly basis, learning new uh, techniques of doing things. And then you have to imagine that as the demands of visual effects get greater, it involves more people working at the same time. So imagine one day you're, you're, you're a painter and you're painting on a, on a canvas, and then the next day it's you and someone else painting simultaneously the same painting. And then the next day, it's five people painting the same painting together. They have to communicate with one another and work together. And then someone says a new software is kind of like someone giving you a whole new palette of paints and paintbrush and say, okay, everybody dip into this now. This is what you're doing. Um, it's a lot to keep up with. It's a full-time job. And, and we have people who, in our industry just do that as they figure out how to do these new things. Every single project we work on, we're using something that we've never used before. There's there's this idea that we just know ahead of time, like, oh, the visual effects, they just know how to do it, right? No, we're, we're constantly inventing the new way of doing something, and sometimes the only way that we know that we're going to be able to pull something off is because we had to do it before with something we didn't know and we succeeded, so now we, we've just gotten good at learning new things. So essentially, if we if we break it down to the lowest common denominator, not to diminish what you do, but to, for explanation purposes, it's like going it's continuously going multiples of eight. Like when we went from the eight box of Crayola crayons 
for the 64 box of Crayola crayons and then just multiples yeah, of eight on top of it. Yeah, it's the okay. eight box or the 64 box or the 256 yeah. box or whatever it is. And if someone said, oh, isn't it easier to, to draw now that you have 256 crayons? You'd say, well, no, not, right. not really. Yeah. It's more choices. Yeah. So when, obviously, as your visual effects houses require more and more work, <laughs> you're going to have to start outsourcing some of them. And you run into things like length. I mean, you have enough with your software and your technology that you have to deal with to constantly keep it up. What about translating that to your partners? Because, again, like you said, communication is key. Well, you've got the left hand doing stuff in Korea, the right stuff doing stuff in Korea, and then you've got the people in the U.S. saying, okay, we're going to start with this. Right. So, I mean, it just, it just seems very complicated. There, there is, there is a, a barrier to scope that comes from the amount of work that's out there that needs to be done and how quickly it needs to be done and how globalized the industry has become. You know, we, just, just my company alone yeah, has an office here in Los Angeles and also in Vancouver. We also have freelancers in New York, in Florida, in England, in China, in various other places and companies from the interface with those places. That's part of my job as a senior you know, supervisor to interact with, with everyone and translate concepts. Uh, you know, just dealing with production itself, you, you're talking differently when you're explaining visual facts to a director, then to a writer, then to a producer, then to an actor. There's already a lot of translation that goes on just, just in English. Many of these facilities that we partner with are aware of you know, the communication issues that are, that are involved in working uh, locally and globally. And so their service is very much centered around proper communication because they get information from us. They have to pass it to their team, leads, and then their team pass it to their team. There's a, there's, a, there's a big game of telephone that goes kind of in all directions. It comes back. Sometimes it gets involved in translation, um, but that's our, my whole job is making sure that it does. It's just really miraculous that when you have that that really sort of final product, you think of it. I mean, you look at the end of the movie, from the twist, all the time, it's remarkable. You, know, you can all come up with that. I do sometimes feel that way, like maybe it would be better if we were just building some models and, you know, and, and putting them in front of the camera. One of the things that computer graphics has added to visual effects is there is a complexity involved in constantly changing things. Like back when you had to make a miniature or a matte painting on a, on a pane of glass and shoot it from only one angle. Once that was done, that was it. You, you, the director couldn't walk on set and say, "Oh, I think we should shoot in this direction instead. I like that better." You had to, you had to do that. I think part of the part of the aversion to CG and visual effects is people saying, "Oh, it looks weird. It looks bad." Like that's not necessarily. Sometimes that's because what CG has made easy is not having to make a decision. And so they'll shoot something one way and then change their mind five times and then eventually they say, oh, we want this thing over here. And you're like, we never planned that. There's no background. The actor didn't do their lines there. So they're making their face change the way they say something and all these things. Like, I, I still think that the best way to make visual effects work is to plan, plan, plan ahead. And uh, that's really the best thing that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned yeah, I mean, you, just, you touched upon it because we were gonna. I was gonna ask about how you know those those sort of difficulties and readjusting on the fly. Um, when they sit there and go, you know what? Let's do this instead. And the technology doesn't exist. Like how Disney sat there with Frozen, and like we have to figure out how the light reflects off the ice and create these prisms. And like, oh, we'll just create the technology. Like when they tell you something like that, you know, like mentally, what's your first reaction? To, to something that's like, oh, just go for it. Uh, you know, we are, we 
are always figuring out new ways of doing things. And that can be either technology or technique or just process, the way that you shoot something, the way that you frame something. Uh, you know, it could be a whole new system, a whole new system of rendering. We've experimented with new ways of rendering, cloud rendering, uh, new ways of simulating things with different softwares, uh, new ways of, of storing data just because what you create is so big sometimes you need to figure out a new way to, to manipulate it. Uh, you get very good at inventing things. Um, and again, no, no, there's this idea that the, the, the phrase, oh, you just push a button, there's a, there's a button for that, there's a software for that, there's a way of doing it. It's just, it's just not true. It's a bunch of people pushing a lot of buttons and, and banging their head against those buttons sometimes and coming up with new ways of doing things. Um, so what, the, the truth of it is, you know, someone may not be asking you, hey, invent this new system to do this. They may say, oh, someone's done this before, right? You can do it. And you say, well, not with the way you're shooting it. You're doing it completely different. You think it's it's superficially the same, but it requires a whole different way of thinking about this. So we're constantly inventing new ways of doing things, even for way, even for things that you might think, oh, that already exists. Right. It's already been done. And speaking of that, have you ever got, done something, say, like, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and... You know, you, you've created this visual effect that came out spectacular. And then three days later, you sit there and go, how the hell did I do that? Like, does that ever happen? Um, I will say I'm trying not to work as many late nights because usually what happens is the opposite of you create something amazing and you can't figure out how you did it later. Usually what happens is you had something that was working and all of a sudden you can't figure out why it doesn't work anymore because you're too exhausted. Uh, it's always better to come back and look at something with a fresh set of eyes uh, because you can get this sort of tunnel vision where you start to see something that it doesn't look right anymore, it doesn't work for you anymore, or you can't get it to work the way you wanted it to anymore, and you have to come back later. It's, it's more often than not, I think something looks terrible, and then I come back and look at it later or a week later or after it's aired and say, I don't know why I'm so worried about that. It looks fine now. With, with, with distance and time, you, you're able to see something more objectively. Makes sense. difficult about visual effects versus other parts of the filmmaking process because visual effects is the only part of the filmmaking process that you can't say we'll deal with it later you get everyone else's we'll deal with it later in production they say ah we'll figure it out fix it in post right in in editorial they think oh this doesn't quite work visual effects will do it oh this thing doesn't this story point say, oh, we'll do a visual effects that sort of work around it. And once it gets to visual effects, you can't, there's no person that you can pick it up to and say, okay, you'll deal with this later. Yeah. We'll just show so, so you do sometimes run up against situations where you have to, where rather than handing it down, you have to push it back up and say, I think we should come up with a new way of doing this. Can we work with the editor? Can we work with the producer? Can we change the way we do this? And because there, because visual effects can do anything, sometimes that means, you know, oh, we shot this with a practical prop because we didn't want to spend the money on visual effects, but now we decided that prop doesn't look good anymore. So now we have to do it with visual effects, and we made that decision. We changed, we changed it, even though we didn't want to spend money before. And, and part of my job is very early on, 
when everyone is saying, yeah, we can do this, we can do this practically, I'm the one who's saying, I don't think they're going to be able to do I think it's going to come back to me. One way or the other, it's going to come back to me. Here's my recommendation for how to do it now or for what to be aware of so that I don't have to put out a bunch of fires in the house. You, you definitely have to anticipate how people are going to think after they've shot something because they really want to believe that it's going to work while they're doing it. Good. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. It's uh, been very informative. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah.